tell you what is FGM or how should we prevent FGM or things like that. We're going to talk about things around FGM. We call them current issues. We call them current issues in the Gambia, right? Good. So how many of us believe that we should practice FGM? If you believe we should practice FGM, can I just please see your hand? Everybody's um, perception, your feeling, your opinion is important. If you think we should practice FGM, can I just see your hand? Can I just see it? Can I just see it? Nice. Uh huh. I have two, about three. All right. Just few of us. All right. Few of us. How many of us think that we should not practice FGM? Can I just see your hand? How many of you think we should not practice FDM? How many of you think we should not practice FDM? Sorry. Can I see you? Can I show you? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, teachers. How many of you think we should not practice FDM? That was my question. What is your opinion? What do you think? Uh, well, only it's only based on So now, now he has pushed us to another level. How many of you are on the fence? If you are on the fence, let me see. Okay. All right. Can we do it this way? We are going to upgrade this instruction with simple ground rules. And the ground rules are going to be like this. Hello? Ground rules are going to be like this. Number one, we have to respect each other's view and their opinion. And number two, we should think like intellectuals. You understand? We should think like intellectuals. How do we think like intellectuals? When we talk about things, we talk about it in a positive manner, in a very professional manner. And you have your reasons, you have your evidences, and you believe in them, and you respect your colleagues' opinion. Do you understand? And uh, nobody should be emotional. Like, you shouldn't feel like, you know, what they are saying is nonsense. No, 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 no. We are here to learn. I'm here to facilitate. I'm not here to give you lecture. This is not in my, I'm not in my classroom. I'm here to facilitate this session with all of you because I have seen experts here already, right? So let us not be emotional. Let us handle this session with maturity and we sit like responsible people. Do you understand? Yes. And we should not use whatever we say here against each other outside this class, uh, outside this hall. We can only pick the sense and then forget about orders that you cannot agree with. Do you understand? All right, so I'll come back to the first category of people and who actually believe that we should practice FGM and he was insisting that he needs space to justify why we should practice FGM. So I'll give them space to uh, highlight their reasons why we should practice FGM. Thank you, you can start please. You, if, you, if you can stand up, fine. Now, I said, uh, I believe, listen, please, it should be practiced if there is no harm around it. It should be practiced if there is no harm around it. That's what I said, and that's what I... All right, he said, FDM should be practiced if there is no harm. So his point is very clear. He's also on defense. Good. So, uh huh. From you, you said it should be practice, right? Yes. Can you stand up, please? Okay. Your name is possible. Okay. My name is Member M. Fadi. Member M. Fadi, School of Education. Yes. Uh, to me, FGM should be practiced those who want to do it, but it shouldn't be uh, uh, done at the local level. Let the doctors, it should be medicalized. Yes. Good. Let it be done at the medical institution so that the experts can do it. That's my take on it. And in a situation where that is not available, what should we do? Uh, then we, we, we ban. 
we should not do it. Yes. So currently, the way the Gambia is, hence there is nothing existing like that, meaning we should not do it. Yeah, yeah. So your stand here is we should not do FGM. FGM, yes. And for now. All right, good. All right. No, no, it's okay. And who has said we should buy this FGM? Sebo, Wuli, Stano. Your name, please. Uh, my name is Hazam. Hello. The guy with the red card. Yes. Are you following what he's saying? Whatever. Yes. All right. Let's hear from him, please. Noise, noise. You know, they are not very smart. The moment people start talking on the side, it affects me. It distracts me a lot, right? You can tell them. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Hazam. Okay. I send Your you name, please. Hazam. Hatab, call him major in. Geography. Wonderful. Nice. Yeah, I say AGM should be practical, right? Daniel, also kindergarten chairs. Okay, uh, when we look at it, uh, religious aspect is dynamically, cultural and cultural aspect. Okay, first we'll discuss on the cultural aspect. Like, uh, in culture, it has been uh, practiced. But like when <laughs> nowadays activists come up with the issue like saying that FGM should be practiced due to the reason as women that go through it they uh, have problems during the level. And whereas most of them who have gone through it do not have this problem of uh, the issue of what, uh, having problem during level. I have a sister at home that go through uh, this uh, FGM. And like this sister, most of the time she do the labor at home. And then after that, then she is taking to the hospital for other issues as well, but she never has any problem. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the issue of it, like, it has been done here since, before. But like, problems like this have never been what, sort of, and it has never been, uh, been talked of in the radio for whatever. But it's just now, these activities are now coming up with what we say that they are come with money. Against our traditional action, <laughs> I will to fight against our traditional action in order to just minimize or heal the value of tradition so as to bring our Western culture and so forth. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. You can begin scanning if you want. Um, <laughs> I, I like your personality, I like your energy, and I really appreciate. Uh, understanding from your emotion, how you express your point. And after all, I know that you have no problem. Uh, but probably there is a breakdown somewhere. You know, you have a sister at home, perfect. And I'm happy that you are concerned to understand how she go through her label until you reach at that justification and conclusion. Wonderful, it's a caring man, right? And I really appreciate that. May Allah continue to bless you and protect us on the right path. You know, in research, you people are intellectuals. When you are to set your sample size, you don't just set a fraction or one person or two people as a sample size to make a justification and then try to get you to conclude the research that right? Yes. How do you know about your sample size? That is quite very important. And at the end of your speech, you are, are you a teacher? Good. You know, professors or lecturers always try to take emotion and allegation when they want to say things. They say things based on facts and based on realities on the ground. Like a statement where you said uh, act activists are coming and they are giving money, you know, you know, UTG students are very intelligent. I met a lot of them outside the Gambia, in other countries, even Oxford, Harvard, um, Cambridge. I met some of them there. And I could not believe that they started it from UTG. And most of the lecturers in UTG all started from UTG, including myself. And these are experts. But I believe at some point where you mentioned the culture and religious misconceptions, hello. Culture and religious misconception are shadowed 
the reality of who we are. Sit down. It doesn't have to be me and you. Sit down, please. Sit down. And I will continue from where you stop. The realities of who we are is shadowed by our culture and the misinformation that we receive from our religion. You see, even the way intellectuals behave in the Gambia, if I say intellectuals, this even includes our scholars. Our scholars. Scholars, it doesn't mean whether you are the imam or you are the pastor, even everybody in this school are scholars, right? But from the way we categorize things and discriminate each other, we will say Islamic scholars. Uh, when I embark on research on this particular FGM thing, so many years ago, I've been doing this all my life. Even my dad was supporting the practice of FGM. I have a brother here, Sini. Yeah. Sini is here, we live together, he's my brother. So I have realized that the society is changing, life is changing, things are changing. But there are more critical issues that we need to deal with as a nation than FGM. More especially when we want to relate it with religion and culture. I look at it and they said, um, uh, you know about this? They said the best among you is someone who, who, can, who can help me. So I questioned few people. And I said, do you know we have failed in this aspect? Do you know we have failed in this aspect? That's why we are here fighting castigating each other, are stigmatizing each other. Hello. That's why we are castigating, we are stigmatizing each other, we are throwing negative words against each other. That is not even Islamic. It's wrong. Because Prophet advised us that scholars should advise, respect each other. Even if your fellow scholar makes a mistake, you don't actually come out publicly to attack them or to address them that way. That's what prophets advise us. So coming back to Kayotu Manta Alamel Quran wa Alamahu, the best among you is someone who learn or read Quran and then teach others. Do we try to think about this? We contextualize this. The concept there is not about you standing to recite Quran. It's about you manifesting what the Quran is saying, and that has to come from your attitude. So if you are speaking to me about something that I think is not right, you are using your emotion, you are using your, your personal feeling and understanding by putting allegations against me. Is that very true, my father, one who I love? And look at it this way. Uh, somebody said it here that if they said it's not right, we should not do it. If it is confirmed that it is wrong, we should not do it. Uh, I've made some research about that too. I spoke to some medical expert and they said, DJ, we don't have to talk about these experts. They said, you know what, it's the same people who were here, I told him you should stop eating meat, you should stop eating that, you should stop eating that because you're about to develop type 2 or type 1 diabetes. And he agreed to it. Come. And I give him an appointment to come next week, he's here on time because that is about your health, your health. Example. And later I told him you should be checking your blood pressure, you should use 30 minutes going, 30 minutes coming to help your blood pressure, and he agreed to it. It's the same man who was was on label, and I said, you have to sign a consent before I proceed with operation. He consented to it, 100%. And I said, we need somebody to donate blood. You have to call him with the call. It's the same man who did all that. And now, as a doctor, I told him, FGM is this, is that, is that. They said, are you are lying. <laughs> what is the problem? He said there is miscommunication somewhere. You know, it's not about money. Good people are good people in the Gambia, and there are good people everywhere. Bad people, there are bad people in the Gambia, and there are bad people everywhere. 
And number one characteristic of a bad person, we can call them hypocrites. During the time of Prophet Muhammad, it was very difficult for him to diagnose them, for him to understand them. Allah, God, have to intervene to help Prophet to know who are hypocrites. Because what they say and try to attract attention on, and what is in them is like Earth and Jupiter. It's a sign of. Yes. And we need to understand this, more especially if the hope of this country is on young people. And these young people are the people who can be easily dribbled. I'm working on a paper with uh, Dr. Sise, uh, Ibrahim Akunyang. We were trying to understand uh, why the unemployment rate of young people in this Gambia is getting very high and people cannot even create jobs for themselves and for others. So we came to realize that the innovation level for Gambians is very low, especially when they are in the Gambia. So we came to realize that from the World Bank data that Nigerians are very good when it comes to innovation. That's why they don't think about people creating jobs for them. But they instead create jobs for themselves. And you can attest to that, right? How many Americans do you know in town who will try to create makeup shop or whatever and they make money out of it? How many? And then you will be surprised about the part I am about to tell you. Gambians, regardless of who we are and the small whatever we have, we are more innovative than Senegalese. Can I tell you why? Senegalese don't innovate things. They will listen to Gambians. Like us, we are very good in talking, we are good in writing, but we hardly implement. So Senegalese will listen from your business idea, your business concept, according to World Bank, World Bank data. They will listen to your information before you know they are good in action. They will put it into action. And they will pick it from a Nigerian, their idea, their raw materials, and they convert it, they personalize it, they brand it. That's why even their careers make more money than our career. True or false? Most of their careers we make them billionaires, millionaires, Gambia. So it is high time for us to go back to our draining board and think about this FGM issue. Even if it is a Sunnah, even if it is something that is incumbent on you as a Muslim, Allah is very good, Allah is positive, Allah is kind. And that's why you will do something, you will say, come back to me, and you beg, and I will forgive you. There was this time that uh, they said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, who is the last person who will enter in Jannah? You know his response? You will be surprised. Should I say it or should I just forget about it? Can I say it another time? Or should I say it now? Let me hear from everybody. All right, then I will say it because it's like you are insisting. They asked him, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the last person who will enter in Jannah? And you know what Prophet told them? Prophet told them, the last person who will enter in Jannah will be the last person who will leave hellfire. Allahu Akbar. And I was like, you see? And the guy went further to say, do you know, there is nowhere in the Holy Quran, even in any Bible or in any written book, you should pay me for this, this is not part of your tuition fee. <laughs> Where, they said somebody will go into Jannah and then later come back, to, come to hellfire. Have you ever seen that or hear that anywhere? No. no. But they will say, they will say, you will be in hellfire and then later move door. But there is nowhere where people will go into heaven and then go to? Say go. So coming back to this, you will see that even something that is mandatory on you in Islam and you have to do it by force, you have to do it like in the month of Ramadan all of us have to keep fast according to religion, right? Your religion. Those who believe in that. So, but they said if you are sick, 
Should you still keep fast? If you keep fast, you kill yourself. Allah said, Oma asaba for min musi but in fabima kasibad aidi. Come back and question yourself. Don't blame me. Don't say, God, you are the one who killed me. I will judge you and question you for the soul that you have spoiled and the soul that you have not created. You should not do it. And every year we said it's a sunnah. I went further to check into Riyadh Salihin. And I come across a lot of hadiths. I have over 2,000 hadiths who were supported and clarified by Aisha. Yes, some of you, the Marcus people, can help me. And then our culture, our tradition, you and me, our time, they will say women should not go to school. As far as you know how to clean yourself, how to pray is fine. And there they said, So who are we as traditional leaders? where they said everybody should learn until uh, no matter how far it is all the way to China. It is mentioned. So who are we to make those determinant issues of personal feelings against women? I asked one man who is a scholar, he said, there was this time that a particular scholar married a very intelligent woman. Anytime he says something, the woman will always give suggestions and her suggestions are better. And he was a traditional ruler. And from there he was like, the moment men start thinking, they think about themselves. And they think about their future. And because they do that, their development usually stay around themselves, especially in Africa. But when women start thinking, they think about themselves, they think about their husband, they think about their environment, they sometimes even think about their unborn children. And this is why their thinkings and their thoughts, they are always the last people to benefit from this. And I said I believe in this because when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm not in the masjid, I'm not sad, I'm not Ustaz, I'm not Marakas, that's why I even reduce my beard. <laughs> so, he said, uh, when he came, people were like, he is poor. That's why he is here to call people on Islam. He likes women. And they said, look at it. It's the same people who were calling him al Amin. So trustworthy. You call me al Amin. Next minute, I came back with something. You said, no, you are a bad person. Can you think about that? It's the same as the way we are thinking now about our own doctors who are saying FGM should not be practiced. So, um, in my some lectures, some of you did some courses with me. I always write something on the board and I ask students to look at it. They will say, that is E, that is E, that is E, letter E. You all know letter E? And they only see E. So now, use the same E, I turn the board another way, they will say, now we are seeing W. I turn it another way, they will say, now I'm seeing M. I said, when situation come, especially as young people growing up, you don't have to use your emotion to affiliate yourself with a particular scholar, whether it's Jite or it's Bunje or it's that, it's that. No, you can even be better than any of them. That's why you come here. The way you think about UTG and the way UTG is when you are in UTG is different. We all pass through that system. I was very really late to come to UTG. Ask Sister J. My wife got her PhD before me. She got her master's before me. She got her PhD before me. Because the perception I used to have, it makes no difference with most of you. Because we are like, UTG is not good, UTG is not recognized. And these are the people who actually could not have the requirement about UTG, and they frustrated some of us who have the requirement to come to UTG. And we were late to come to UTG. If your lecturers give you course outline, go online and you check on the same course code, the same course outline with Harvard and Oxford. It's the same. The way I am talking to you right now is the same way I was talking to students at Cambridge last year in the UK at Cambridge. And they listened to me, they were so surprised, they were amazed. And I'm from UTG. And when we are in the government, we think Cambridge is something else. And I'm from UTG. They respect me very well. And they even wanted me to stay. But when we are here, we don't value each other. 
we don't even understand each other because we believe and been controlled by other people's thought. When you, you can even be better than those people. You see, in this generation, when we are listening, when we decide to listen to scholars, our scholars now, they will start to talk about themselves first to gain recognition before they pass the message. Maslow, Hasbach, and other theories will talk about the problem and give you solution to the problem. Most of you, you memorize those issues and the problems and whatever. You cannot even remember who is the author, who is the person who discovered that. It happened to all of us. But our scholars now, you mention the name, but you cannot affiliate any sensible point that they said that you can remember and attribute it with them. So there is a problem. Are they trying to gain recognition and to solve social problems? Or are they trying to uh, influence more followers like the, the other system in other countries? I am this, I am that, you have to follow me, you have to follow my this, my... You see, I think we are the very people who should start thinking rationally when it comes to the issues of FGM. It's not a problem. Even in Islam, to leave my beer is a stronger sunnah than FGM. To cut my trousers, probably like yours or somebody else, is even a stronger sunnah than, you know, FGM. Be kind to each other. Uh, is it lay you mean ahadikum hata you do? It's even a more stronger sunnah than this. To go to masjid early, to do some noble prayers before the actual prayer. In fact, that can even replace your guide prayer. It's a stronger sooner than that here. Where are we failing? We are failing at a point where the Quran cannot reflect in our attitude. And we want to gain recognition because we were the same very people who were part of the same system when the laws buying laws about buying FGM was introduced and you lose their value and you want to regain your value you go through certain things you try to back yourself around that to attract attention it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense so just to make life very easy for all of us whether I'm your lecturer whether I'm your imam whether I'm your fellow or I'm your pastor, it's not important. You have your right to say what you want to say. But I have also my right to think rationally and to make a smart decision. So that's why when I'm called to talk about FGM, it's not about debates. It's not I just inform people. We talk about it as an intellectual by excluding emotion and tell you the truth about it. So you decide to go, even in your religion. They said, um, who am I to force people to agree? And looking at it this, uh, this way, like you talk about advocates. They call me advocates, fine. But my approach is different. Can I tell you why my approach is different? Yes. I accept realities and I don't present faith. And because that we present faith, and sometimes we become so unrealistic in the way we do things, that is not me, it's called hypocrisy, right? It's wrong. And since the time that people were saying, we're going to National Assembly to do this, so I watched the two videos. And I said to myself, this is the same thing, what my professor told me, he came from Germany to visit me in Zambia. I took him to School of Business and uh, SDPA. He spent one week with me in the Gambia here. He attended our orientation. He went almost everywhere. The time he was leaving, Madam, he told me, Alassane, Gambians are developed in the Gambia. I could not concept for He said, I'm in the Gambia, I will not tell you anything until I leave. So when he left, he told me, Alassane, what I meant by Gambians are developed in the Gambia. When I was in the Gambia, you remember we went to the beach, I saw a small boy 
playing football, the way they control the ball, the way they pass, their moves is like they are professional players. And these are young people who have never gone through any professional football training. That is talent. I went to the ghetto. I met boys smoking weed, and I talked to them about politics. They analyze Gambian politics even better than someone in CNN who is a political scientist. And I was surprised. I went to the market to do some groceries. I spoke to those market vendors. They were able to highlight clearly their achievements, their challenges, and proper recommendations what can be done about their business to make it more sustainable and modernized. That is Gambia for you. So he mentioned some different, different sectors. He said, now, by looking at that country, when people can think better like that, and you look at the infrastructure, and you look at the way things happen when they come collectively, then there is something missing. Tonyale. It's true. And what is it? Intellectuals are not accepting to take the reality. Your section is better. Maybe here is better. Some of you will do your assignment. You will not give it to proper reference. When I'm marking my results for assignments, I'm frustrated. Some of you will go for your master's. You will still struggle to do your proper reference because you will be on TikTok all day. But you will not want to go on YouTube to learn how to do proper reference. And you go with that deficiency. You exit from UTG. You are an expert. Because we are lazy. Your section... To say he's from Islamic school, this one is from uh, English school. For me, I see this thing, what we are doing. It's like a profession. You've been a carpenter, you've been a tailor maker. It's no different from me being a lecturer. We all into something to earn living. But God is there for all of us. And we should all know him. And we should all know how to worship him. So you cannot make me a pathway that I should go to hell because I'm, I'm from English school or I'm from that. That, that is not the case. So, if that is the case, then what is missing? FGM is not the problem. The problem is miscommunication and how we are easily influenced by other people's personality and their emotion and misinforming us in a way that is not realistic and we even don't pay attention to things that are more relevant to our life. They said if you don't go through FGM, you are not clean. I have heard all these things. Who told you that? Who told you that? That is an insult. You should not say it. And they said, if you don't go to FPM, you like men. What is the problem if you like men? <laughs> what is the problem? God talks about love. He even mentioned people on earth that he loved. True or false? I think he said, if I hear this, his friend, right? Huh? He said, I love. He mentioned things that he loved. Hello, Prophet himself said he loves certain things, he mentioned them, true or false. And if somebody don't go to FGM, they like men, what is the problem with that? How about if you are a man you like women, what is your problem? The problem here is attitude. We are lazy, we don't train our children to have proper attitude. Whether you have gone through FGM or not, if you have proper attitude, you will not go near fornication or even to be. There was this particular thing where the entire society was serving people don't have food to eat. And then he was the only one blessed with a lot of resources, food, and people came to him to beg food or someone to buy from him. He saw a beautiful lady around the he asked them to call that lady, lady came. And he was trying to mess around with the lady. He closed all the all doors around him. And he wanted to have an affair with the lady. And the lady said, You have closed all doors, but except one door. And he said, Where is that door? And he said, God, oh, he's seen us. And the woman will be our God, you will not do certain things. If you don't be our God, you can do anything. So if you go through FGM, if you want, you can do anything you want. If you don't go through FGM, you don't have proper attitude. The same thing. So we are lazy. 
you leave your house, I leave my house, you leave your house, we all leave our house since in the morning. We don't call, we don't have time with our children, we don't discuss with them, we don't tell them what is right, what is wrong, and they go on their own. And they are, uh, they, they are injected and influenced by the society, and they take the attitude from the street, and they do what they want to do, and you want to use FGM as a yardstick as the cause of that? Are we that foolish with bachelor's degree holders to think like that? I am getting so disappointed. So disappointed. That's why on Facebook, when we were coming to Paraba, Wasson Gambia posted Paraba, and they were saying UTG students should take care of this environment. I went through all the comments. People were saying negative things about UTG students. I went back and told Ali, you have to remove this post. You know why? And I had to go back on the comments to say, we trust our students and they are decent people and they are responsible. And that, is that not the case? It's the truth. Because everybody is putting negative things about people who are paying our salary. And that's the reality. So let us think positively and we preach positivity in our society. That's what makes difference. That's how we can make difference in our society. Because you are the intellectuals. When they are talking about FGM, FGM is a minor thing. We're talking about human life. And how do we talk about it? We want to protect people. And if FGM is one thing that is affecting their life, we will stop it. If it is about food, we will go for food. If it is about ignorance, we will create awareness. If they don't have anywhere to stay, we will create shelter for them. That's our focus. We are too important, too great, too innovative to think about FGM and we see it as an issue. I'll come well, Abang. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very